Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today I'm doing a bit of an update on my office tanks. So if you've been following along for a while, you'll know I've got three tanks, one, two, and one over there uh, in my office. This is where I do most of my work. And I've been making some additions. So we'll check them out. But first and foremost, I need you all to say happy birthday to my dad. So this video will probably be coming out on Sunday or Monday. It's his birthday on Monday. Um, so he watches every video. He's my biggest supporter. So in the comments, happy birthday, Graham's dad, Robert, if you like. Uh, and I know he watches at least the first 30 seconds of every video, so you should see this. But anyway, on with the fish. So this is the Fahaka puffer tank. The Fahaka himself is just hiding here. You might be able to see him there. Big and fat, because he's just gobbled up a bunch of clams. And as you can see, the Senegal Bicher is in here now. Um, in this tank together, we've got Fahaka Puffer, Senegal Bicher, a Black Ghost Knight fish that lives in this pot here, and two or three Bristlenose Plecos. And so far, so good. Um, most of the advice you'll see is do not put anything with a Fahaka Puffer. But other than some guppies which he's made a meal of, he's actually been pretty docile. Now I will say it's the first day that I put the Boucher in, he went in, sat in the middle of the tank and then thought, right where am I, I'll just get my wits about me and the Fahaka came along and took a big chomp on his tail. Um, didn't take a chomp out of his tail but just bit it. It was a bit of a struggle and then he let go. But ever since then, they seem to be tolerating each other, or if they're not, the Boucher's an idiot and is pushing his luck ridiculously because he does this quite a lot where he'll sit huddled up with the Fahaka. Black Ghost Knife keeps to himself over in this corner. And there's one of the bristle noses now, you can just see on top of there. But so far, harmonious. I just need to do a massive bit of gardening. Right, let's see if we can do a little maintenance without losing a knuckle. Thank you. 
This tank's actually lit by, it's a marine light, so it hangs from the ceiling. Um, it's a vib Vibraspar or Vivitar, it's a 300 watt thing. It's got two lighting channels, so it's got the full spectrum. You can dial it, the intensity in. I've lowered everything because I think it was just too much because I was having a little bit of an algae issue with this tank. Um, very even the sand was green for a bit, but now that I've lowered that, that has started to make a bit of a difference. Feeding wise, the Fahaka is feeding mainly on snails. Um, I've got some clams as well put in, which he, which he, the Bicher and the Black Ghost Knife like. And then they'll get blood worms and Vicari Vibro, Hikari Vibro bites and various other treats, prawns, things like that. Quite a varied diet. I think the Fahaka is now well and truly off live food. I haven't seen him eat anything for quite a while. Um, many of you will know there was a tetra living in here quite happily. Uh, not a tetra, a guppy. Um, and yeah, he ignored it and it was tiny and definitely mouthful sized. So I took that out and rehomed it in one of the guppy tanks. So now, hopefully, all will be well in this tank. The picture's cool, he gives it a little bit of a different dimension to this tank because he is so active. He's always in and out and about, checking stuff up, ruffling some feathers. So on to the pea puffer tank. This tank is looking really good. Most of the algae issues are now under control. I think I've got the lighting, the fertilization, the CO2, all under control in this tank. Um, they have been doing really well, the pea puffers. Hard to focus on, but there you go. So if you can see this contraption at the back here, that's actually a bell. Um, for CO2. So what we do is, the can sits outside, we fill it up by pressing on the button and that fills it up with CO2. That's like the oldest method of doing CO2 dosing. But if you can see, if you remember from previous videos, these plants were just caked in moss and hair algae. Not moss, hair algae and other types of algae. That's largely gone, there's still a little bit on these ones, these leaves down here. If we go over and look at this one, very similar story on here. It's almost gone. I think that just needs a little bit more time and perseverance and we shall sort that tank out good and proper. Now what I want to show you, and why I'm waffling, is I have put in a coolie loach into this tank. But I can't see him now. Um, unfortunately, I got two coolie loaches at the auction the other week. Uh, one of them died about two or three days into quarantine. Um, I'm not sure why, it, it never ate, so I'm not sure if that was the, the problem, or if it was sick before I got it, or what happened. Um, but yeah, I just found it on the second or third day, lying in the bottom of the tank. The other one seems to be a vigorous eater and was doing quite well. So I've put him in here. I'm well aware that they need to be in larger groups than just singles. Um, so I am on the lookout and if anyone around the South Yorkshire area has seen any coolie loaches anywhere by all means let me know um, because I am looking for some more so last but not least the smallest tank in this office it was previously just a shrimp tank it's now going to be a shrimp and this guy's oh, a pair of these actually. These are uh, killifish, obviously. So we've got a pair of these guys living in here at the moment. Um, I've actually only moved them in here today. What I thought would happen would be that they would leave the shrimp alone, but they might make a snack of the shrimplets, if you like, and that does seem to be what is happening. They're practically ignoring any of the larger shrimp. So this tank, I've got some floating plants to keep the, the lights down a little bit. I've got the rocks arranged so there's some overhanging areas. We've got shrimp, we've got obviously the killifish. A few snails, some moss, some beautiful philandra, some uh, anubias. But the 
the pothos at the back, that's really taken off as well as the bamboo. Um, this I've got in most of my tanks, it's really good at sucking up the nitrates. Um, shameless plug, check out the website, link in the description if you want to buy some of this, I can send it to you. Um, but yeah, the shrimp are, are alright. I've not seen the fish themselves taking any interest whatsoever in any of the, the larger shrimp. Um, they probably will go for some of the smaller shrimp, so that'd be a nice little supplemental food source for them. But I'm really liking this. It, it's probably too small for them long term, um, but it's a nice little scape, a nice little busy tank. There's lots going on there. These fish look really cool, so it's a nice tank to have in your office. And um, so it's quickly becoming one of my favourite tanks. This one. So that's it, just a quick update video showing you what's going on in these tanks. Um, I've got plenty more fish which are still quarantining down in the fish room. If you've not been here before, click that subscribe button and then you won't miss any of the future updates. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.